Yes, I, I am pretty despicable. Long gone are the Minion-centric prequels. The Minions Rise of Gru movie bridges both the Minions and Despicable Me franchises together. But Rise of Gru is still a far cry away from the Despicable Me movies we've grown accustomed to. There are plenty of differences between the two films that are pretty hard to ignore. Number one, are slightly different from the original. When we first meet Gru in Despicable Me, he's a supervillain with a goal set in place to steal the moon. While Gru's evilness is maintained in the Minions' Rise of Gru, his overall goals are slightly different. In Rise of Gru, Gru is yet to achieve the title of supervillain, and instead of aspiring to be the greatest supervillain as a solo act, he's vying for a spot in the infamous villain group The Vicious Six. You don't want to cross me? <laughs> Come back when you've done something evil! Number 2. A brand new set of characters. The Vicious Six are essentially Gru's heroes, especially Wild Knuckles, his favorite. But they're also never-before-seen characters. In this film, long gone are the past, or should we say future, villains like Vector, Drew Gru, Scarlet Overkill, and Eduardo Perez. Instead, the notorious supervillain team is made up of Bell Bottom, the leader of the group, Stronghold, who has metal hands and super strength, Vengeance, who loves roller skating, Jean Claude, who boasts a large lobster claw, Nunchuck, a nun who wields nunchucks, and finally Wild Knuckles, a grade A fighter who loses his life when Bell Bottom lets him fall to his demise so that she can take over the Vicious Six. But it isn't long before Gru realizes that maybe working alongside other supervillains isn't the right path, especially ones you're unable to trust. Number 3. He didn't always want them. Speaking of not being able to trust other supervillains, in Rise of Gru we see that Gru wasn't always keen on keeping the minions around. In fact, at one point, although the minions may have helped boost his supervillain career, he just can't put up with all their silliness. The silliness that's clearly messing up his odds. Cut to Otto trading the magic stone for a pet rock. Did you just trade my future for a pet rock? So, he fires them. But knowing the rest of the franchise, he allows them to prove themselves and earn their jobs back. It's interesting to see the minions interact with Gru before they form their complicated relationship in the present. Gru obviously grows to love them, but he doesn't really ever get over their annoyingness, does he? Number 4. A New Minion now that we're on the topic of minions, the Kevin, Stewart, and Bob BFF trio gets a new addition in Rise of Gru, Otto. Otto is a little more round than the former three, wears braces, and has about ten little spikes of hair atop his head. Personality-wise, he's just really happy to be here. Oh, and he's totally obsessed with his pet rock, hence the trade for the magic stone when he comes face to face with the Vicious Six. The question is, what happens to Otto after Rise of Gru? Why wasn't he a main character in the other Despicable Me films? Number 5. Everyone is younger. While there are a bunch of new characters in Rise of Gru, like the Vicious Six, we all see the return of some original characters. Of course, Gru. But then we also see Gru's mother Marlena and Dr. Nefario, except they're a lot younger. Rise of Gru takes place in the 1970s, and we see Gru as a child and how his super villainous was developed. The minions even call him their mini-boss, instead of just boss in this film. Instead of the character development journey we see Gru go on in the Despicable Me films, we almost see the opposite of that in Rise of Gru. We see how he got to peak villainy. Number 6. They transform into animals. The Zodiac Stone is a powerful weapon in this film. It allows the Vicious Six to turn into unbeatable creatures, a dragon, monkey, snake, and tiger. But for the minions, we get to see them in a very different form when the power of the stone is unleashed. You've seen purple minions, but in this film they become a bunny, goat, and rooster while still somehow managing to look like minions. But thanks to another new character, Master Chow, the minions are able to utilize whatever power they received from the stone, along with her martial arts practice, and rectify the situation. Number 7. It's a lot of backstories. While The Minions' Rise of Gru is technically a sequel to The Minions films, it's also a prequel to the Despicable Me films, something we've never seen in this franchise. That means the film is full of backstory and maybe slightly less action. Being a backstory, it sets the pace of the film a little slower compared to Despicable Me 2 and 3. But the creators were careful to be mindful of that, and it seems they knew that a lot of backstories had to mean a shorter runtime. Rise of Gru is only a total of 87 minutes long. Number 8. Gru isn't a father yet. Although super obvious, this is still one of the biggest differences between Rise of Gru and Despicable Me. 
We don't have the lovable Gorls, Agnes, Margot, and Edith, which also means we don't get Gru as a father or the childlike wonderment of the three girls. <gasps> Look, a unicorn horn! Although Gru is a child himself in this film, he isn't your typical kid in the way that the three sisters are. He's evil and they're unicorns and rainbows. It's a unicorn! <laughs> Number nine, it looks quite different. When we think of Gru and his home, we think of the gothic mansion and underground lair that he's built for himself in Venice, California. And then, of course, the eventual de-eviling of his home when he adopts the girls. However, in Rise of Gru, we see none of that. Instead, we see Gru's childhood home, a respectable family home in the suburbs where the lair we see in the future was merely just a plan. Number 10. It doesn't take place in Venice. We just discussed how the majority of the Despicable Me films take place in Venice, where Gru has his home. But in this film, we see the suburbs where Gru's childhood home is, and then we get some action scenes with the minions in San Francisco. DreamWorks is still keeping that California dream alive, it seems. But another huge factor that affected the setting was that the film takes place in the 1970s. It gave a new backdrop to the franchise and kind of almost makes it more relatable to older audiences but still reminds us that DreamWorks isn't all that serious about keeping things coherent by including some things like a copy of a magazine that is celebrating Richard Nixon's presidential win on the front, and then congratulations John F. Kennedy's presidential campaign from 1961 on the back. And Otto's Pet Rock? That was a toy from the 70s that didn't come out until 1975. Number 11. He wasn't able to do his usual voice acting. The Despicable Me family also experienced a bit of a tragedy going into Rise of Gru. They were without one trusted member of the cast, John Sigan. In Despicable Me 2 and 3, as well as in The Minions, John Sigan voices multiple background characters and was a real jack-of-all-trades when it came to voice acting. Unfortunately, John passed back in 2017, and this will be the first Despicable Me film without his cherished voice. Number 12. It was a work-from-home task force. On top of all the added stress the DreamWorks team undoubtedly handles when making a Despicable Me film, for The Rise of Gru they were forced to work from home. Yep, The Rise of Gru was also affected by the worldwide pandemic. Their teams located in both Paris and Santa Monica had to rebuild their studio offices in their homes. While for the most part things ran smoothly in the sense that the movie was released, the original release date was postponed multiple times and ended up premiering July 2nd, 2022 more than a year after the original announcement date. But in the end, they got there. Talk about hard work. Have you noticed any other differences between Rise of Gru and Despicable Me? Do you think the film would have been better if it wasn't made during the pandemic? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We'll see you in another video. Thanks for watching.